Welcome to the Amplify Your Voice TV show with Megan Breders. We are almost at the end of season one and it's just a few episodes that still lined up before we will start um, interviewing some guests for season two. But on the show, we amplify your voice, we impact lives, we impart wisdom, and we also speak to marketplace leaders, emerging authors, and kingdom influencers. And on today's show, we have the beautiful Jen Filer with us. And Jen is one of the featured authors in my newly released book called Unlock Your Voice, Breakthrough Stories of Kingdom Women Who Are Called to Impact the Marketplace. So I just want to real quick introduce you to Jen. So Jen is a victory mindset consultant, call to partner with and mentor apostolic kingdom leaders. And as a kingdom warrior, she's passionate about encouraging, equipping and empowering them on their journey from pit to palace. So having dealt with decades of chronic pain and depression, she understands the importance of taking your thoughts captive and walking in your kingdom identity, power and authority. So a master's of education degree and multiple coaching certifications gives Jen a unique ability to offer her clients solutions that combine biblical, neuroscientific and practical tools and strategies. So Jen, Jen is also a, a best-selling author, so we will be sharing a little bit more about that. But welcome to the Amplify Your Voice TV show, Jen Filer. Thank you so much for having me, Megan. It's a pleasure. So from the pit to the palace, can you share a little bit about that and also how that relates to your story? Yes. So I will try to give you the cliff note version. So basically, um, I had wanted to be a teacher since kindergarten and I just was very driven my whole life, go to college, became a Spanish teacher. Um, after I, my aunt was a missionary in Guatemala, so I decided on Spanish, loved it, was so driven. And unfortunately, back in 1993, I was in a car accident um, during college. So I, you know, they thought, oh, it'll go away. It's just muscular, that kind of thing. Um, but so I got married, I um, started my teaching job, but unfortunately the pain was too much. And uh, I had to retire, you know, from my job only, you know, after five years. So um, in the chapter, I talk about kind of being in this identity pit because it was just, I had been striving and, and, you know, this big goal my whole life, you know, to be a teacher basically. So I really struggled with this identity piece. And then it became another pit of um, not only the chronic pain, I'm going on, it's about 30 years now. Um, chronic pain kind of leads to depression, that kind of thing. So I felt like I was in this pit, you know, fast forward to I become a stay at home mom. And you know, there's emotions all over with that in general, anyway, you know, so the the depression on top of, you know, the being the mom, like it was just this, I was in a, a dark place for a while. But I'm just so grateful that the Lord held me and kept me that whole time. And I was clinging to him as my anchor of hope. And, um, you know, it, I wrote, I write about in the story too, about even when Joseph, he was thrown in that pit and then he was taken out, but he was still in that prison. Right. And I felt like I was still kind of imprisoned, you know, almost like wrap, wrapped up in chains, you know, just like, what is this identity in Christ? How do I get out? What is this? Like, I'm a Christian. Shouldn't life be better? So I go through that in the chapter in the book too. And, um, then the palace parts, I was in this pit and then the journey to get out of the pit was really when I got my life coach certifications and I was learning about cognitive behavioral therapy. You know, you take your thoughts captive because your thoughts become your feelings, which become your actions. And then, you know, you're left with your results. So I was really working on um, renewing my mind. Joyce Meyer's book, Battlefield of the Mind, was really instrumental to me. Like, hey, I don't have to believe everything that pops into my head, you know. So that was this journey. And then the palace part of it, is just really in the past couple of years, understanding my identity in Christ, that we're, you know, royal daughters of the most high God, that we can rule and reign and decree seated in heavenly places. And, you know, we have certain things available to us as daughters of the Lord, you know, just the peace, the healing, all these things. So it's been quite a journey. And I'm just really passionate about getting people out of that pit into the palace because the enemy wants to keep us in that pit. Whereas, you know, that's John 10, 10, the enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy. Right. But Jesus died to give us abundant life. And I really want to help empower people and women to to get to that palace position. So that's a little bit about my journey. Wow. 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 So what is your why and why do you do what you do? Yeah, great question. Um, it kind of goes along with what I just said. It's honestly, 
I, I kind of get a little feisty about it. I really just want to punch the enemy in the face. Like, I feel like he's stolen so much from me over the years, peace, joy, you know, enjoying the time with the kids. I kind of have a good friend that says, you know, it's like putting up your hand, um, like talk to the hand enemy, like the ears aren't listening, get back under my feet where you belong. Luke 10, 19, we have power to trample upon scorpions, right? And, and, and God wants to protect us. So it's just, I feel like he's, he's been defeating um, God's daughters for far too long. So I just have this like feisty passion inside of me. Like I want to equip people to recognize these lies of the enemy. You don't have to listen to these voices. And I, I asked the Lord one time before getting on a, uh, with a client, Lord, who do you want me to be for your people? What do you want me to be? And I heard him say voice of truth. So I really help people to recognize those lies of the enemy. They don't have to give into those feelings, whether it is pain or not. You know, I'm not saying my pain magically disappeared. You know, I'm believing for complete healing and walking that out, but recognizing those lies and replacing it with God's truth so that we can walk boldly into all God's created us to be, right? And to be that impact maker in the world. So it's more, um, I feel like I've invested hundreds of hours, thousands of dollars, that kind of thing. And I really want to shorten the process for people. That's my why, because I feel like, oh, I wish I would have known this years ago. It just, unfortunately, you know, these kingdom principles aren't necessarily taught in the church all the time. And I just wish I would have known more about this and spiritual warfare. So that's really my why and what motivates me. That's awesome. So Jane's chapter is quite powerful because she is a strong writer. Jen, how has writing helped you to actually process everything and to embrace your God-given calling? It helped me. It's like, you know, I feel like it's layers of an onion. You know, it's like breakthrough. You think you got so far. And then as I'm writing, I'm like, wow, I still have to kind of uncover that and unpack that with the Lord. Then he would reveal more to me. And, you know, so it's just... It's been this journey of, yeah, just unpacking it. And it was really good because it's like, sometimes we just get so busy with life. We go, go, go. And it's almost like we forget, you know, it's like, oh, I, I remember now that person prayed for me and I had a healing or, oh, I remember this prophetic word over me. So it was really like almost like those stones of remembrance to like kind of going back um, getting clarity to my journey. And I love that, you know, having the deadlines and having the chapter and the accountability and all that, it helped me to get my story on paper, right. And to get it out into the world because, you know, for such a time as this, right? Like the whole 414 thing, Esther, right? Like we need to share these breakthroughs um, with other women and and now's the time. Like so many people are remaining silent and um, yeah. So anyway, so I, I don't know. What was the second part of your question? Did I answer that fully? Because I have a lot of thoughts going in my mind I wanted to share. You actually answered it because you spoke about the writing portion and then I asked you how it helped you discover your calling. Yes, yes. And that, yeah, I definitely want to do a solo book now. I'm like, okay, this writing thing. All right. You know, that teacher background, you know, my master's of education and degrees coming in handy and grading papers. I was like, okay, yeah, I can do this and getting it all out there. So yeah, it was very empowering and a great process. Awesome. So we're going to go for a break. And when we continue, we're going to be speaking about how you can unlock your voice through writing when we come back. Jen will also be sharing some of her expertise with us. So you'll be right back. Do you find yourself pulling back from leadership even though you know you've been called to lead? Do you want to advance the kingdom but don't feel equipped? Are you curious about what it takes to become a solid kingdom leader? The nine foundational lessons to becoming a solid kingdom leader will equip you to lead effectively in today's turbulent times and prepare you for what lies ahead. If you know you're called to advance the kingdom, there's no time to waste. You are a kingdom leader and the world needs you. Order my book at michellemferrar.com. Coaching also available to take your leadership to the next level. Book a coaching session on the website today. And we are back. If you just tuned in, we are speaking about our new release book called Unlock Your Voice that I co-authored with 11 women from across the globe. So it became a bestseller within 24 hours of it being launched on the 25th of May in multiple categories. So we have one of the co-authors, Jen Filer, in studio with us. So Jen, we spoke about the writing and where the Lord is taking you. What did you say was the challenges for you as you were writing your chapter and trying to birth what God has given you? Also, what were the stumbling blocks that you had to face? I love that you said birthing because I do. It's like once you finally hit send, I'm like, oh, I feel like I just birthed a baby, you know? It's like this whole process of editing and getting feedback and showing it to friends. And then I think the the 
part that I definitely grew in, you know, as a teacher too, I'm very much, you know, we'd have to write lesson plans. It's like you write it out, you prep, you plan. So it's kind of like we plan it out. You know, but it's that verse, you know, man plans his steps, but the Lord or plans his ways, the Lord directs his steps or something. So that was an area I definitely had to grow in, in terms of like leading into the Holy Spirit and like, Lord, what do you want me to say? Or I may have had something and then he had me tweak something to be like, okay, let's, you know, have another angle here, you know, and that kind of thing. It was very interesting because, you know, as, as a coach, I, I take it very, a coach and a consultant. I, I also hire my own coaches and consultants and mentors, right? So it's been very interesting because throughout this journey, I've been getting coached and had a consultant and a mentor, and I've been growing in my identity as the kingdom warrior queen and who I'm meant to serve. So it was almost like, um, I was not only birthing it, but I was also growing in the process. It was like I birthed and then went through like baby and toddlerhood, you know, at the same time. So it's just, it was a, it was really empowering journey and enlightening for me too, you know, and the Lord continued to help me grow even as I was writing to encourage others. That's so good. Jen, why do you think accountability and mentorship is so important for your next level growth? Yeah. Like I said, mentorship, um, I feel like, you know, for me wanting to mentor people, me getting mentored, it's people that have been there, been where I want to where I want to go, where I want to be and learning. It's almost like getting that cliff note version, like I said, and they can kind of show you the pitfalls and they can show you um, the mistakes that they made or what you might run into, you know, give you a heads up almost. And the accountability, it's just so good. You know, um, I know like within your groups, it's like, you know, maybe focus times of writing or you have should have this many words done by this amount of time or, you know, just little things you'll put in the group to encourage us, like keep going or, you know, be unapologetically yourself, you know, that kind of thing. And then just the accountability to stick with those deadlines to, um, you know, understand the writing process. And then again, if you don't have those deadlines, it's like, oh, I'll get to it someday, you know? So I just think accountability mentorship is definitely important, especially if you're writing a, a book or a chapter to contribute to that. Yeah. Awesome. Tell us real quick, what is next for you right now? What was the message that became even clearer when you put your pen down and you wrote the last few sentences of your chapter? Why do you sense God is speaking to you and what is your assignment for this next season? Wow. So the journey I've been on and the people I was helping before, at first I thought it was people in chronic pain. Um, and then I felt like the Lord directed me. It was moms and teens struggling with depression and anxiety. So I, like I said, it was kind of just been this development process. And now it's these, you know, I've had some prophetic words and just confirmation from the Lord, just empowering these apostolic leaders and helping them really step into this authority, royal authority and power and that sort of thing. And one of the things that I'm definitely growing in, if you've heard of Shay Bynes, she has that book, um, Grace Over Grind. And just so often as entrepreneurs, you know, we're grinding, we're hustling, we're, you know, putting in the rep, staying up late, that kind of thing, but really leaning into that grace. And in Matthew um, 11, 28 to 30 in the message translation, that's that whole passage about my yoke is easy, burden light. And in the message, it talks about leaning into God's unforced rhythms of grace. So in the chapter, I share about keys to unlock the real you. And the why was not only your weapons of warfare, which, you know, we know the sword of the spirit, shield of faith, that kind of thing, but also yielding to the Lord and what he would say, you know, spending that time with the Lord in the morning, whether that's scripture or worship or journaling, that kind of thing. And just really listening and leaning into him and his grace and his wisdom. So um, that's on my journey where I'm, I'm growing and I want to help other, you know, kingdom entrepreneurs, apostolic kingdom leaders, you know, just to, to lean into that because that's, that's the best way to do business really, you know, so it's, it's just an empowering process and relying on him to give you the strength and the wisdom for those next steps. So we had our virtual launch party in May and it's almost two months later. Mm-hmm. Since the book was launched, right? So how are you going to leverage the book that you co-authored? Ah, such a good question. And I'm still kind of playing with some ideas, but I'll give you a little sneak peek. So a couple of things I um, would love to do, um, maybe a little bit of a book club and just discussing some of it, because I think sometimes people read a book and it's like, okay, you know, and then they never apply it, but you can't really get true transformation without application. So maybe discussing some of those things. And like I said, in the chapter, I give almost like a little formula and different keys. So maybe unpacking a little more with each of the, you know, the K-E-Y-S and what that stands for. So um, working on like a little mini um, course, mini coaching program, creating a Facebook community, and just really spreading the word, um, you know, to friends, family, fellow kingdom entrepreneurs. Powerful book for sure. And the unlock your your voice was just, it really resonated with me. Cause like I said, the Lord told me to be voice of truth. 
And then like with the chains thing, I just feel like it's like unlocking the real you. We struggle so much with stuff and Jesus on the other side, like, here's the key. Like I have these kingdom keys for you. So just like leveraging, you know, like the chapter is almost like a little workbook to help people, you know, uh, with my core message. So kind of just helping people know who I am. Um, you know, obviously the book gives me authority and leverage with that. So just kind of helping that and then getting them into, um, you know, group coaching, mentorship, one-on-one, -on -one, whatever, you know, I, I just want to best meet the needs of these um, apostolic leaders. So that's my plan. So let's go back to when we first met. I know that there's so many entrepreneurs out there that spend thousands of dollars on coaches and programs. So I want you to speak to the person that may miss out on opportunities because they are afraid to take the next step. Can you encourage them? Remember, we spoke about spending so much money on projects. I'm spilling the beans right now. <laughs> I would encourage people. And I, it's interesting because, um, the, our uh, relationship too and partnership is when you know that it's meant to work out. Like I was never one to maybe just like get people on a call, try to sell them that kind of thing. When you're in alignment with a coach or with a mentor, or whatever, it, it just works out. And I feel like number one, if you're seeking the Lord, if you're saying yes to him, I feel like this whole entrepreneurial journey has been a journey of yeses, you know? And so even though it doesn't make sense, like for example, you know, I signed up for a, a retreat and that allowed me to meet somebody who then had me be a panelist on a few TV shows and then she's the one that introduced me to you. So it's just like, oh, it makes sense. So in the moment, you're like, Lord, why are you having me invest again? You know, I'm not seeing the fruit or the harvest yet. But it's just like if you're abiding in the Lord and you're seeking him, he's going to give you direction. So you're just trusting him, number one. Number two, just that um, when you're in alignment, you'll sense that too. And you just really have to trust and take that leap of faith because, um, you know, if you keep, you know, the Bible talks about in Galatians 6, 9, don't grow weary in well-doing you know, keep sowing those seeds in due time, you will reap that harvest. So I would just say, keep trusting the Lord, keep seeking out those mentors. When you're aligned, go with those God nudges, because even if it doesn't make sense now, it'll make sense later and you will reap the harvest. So, and you're worth investing into, you know, your good soil. Exactly what Jane mm -hmm. said. So you need to invest in the place that you want to grow in. So the way I met Jane was definitely a divine connection. So originally, I got in touch with Denise Harvey, who introduced me to Anne, and you will meet all the lovely ladies and you will read all these stories in the book because all of them are featured authors in Unlock Your Voice. So Jen, what are some of the other things besides writing that you are busy with right now, uh, whether it's in ministry and as well as the marketplace and how can we connect with you? Sure. So um, right now, uh, declarevictory.com is my website. So I'm really passionate about helping people, like I said, take their thoughts captive. I have a proprietary freedom formula, helping people recognize those lies, come out of agreement with those, replace with God's truth, and really line up with your kingdom identity, power, and authority. So declarevictory.com is the website. You can just find me on Facebook, jenfiler.com. I'm sorry, <laughs> Jen Filer is just my name on Facebook. And then uh, I'm in the process of setting up, you know, Facebook business page, Declare Victory, and um, I will have a private Facebook group, Kingdom Warrior Queens. And it's this, um, you know, like I said, empowering these apostolic women. I feel like I really want to raise up this army and it's not, there's no competition in the kingdom. I want this collaboration and this book project has been a great example of that too, like supporting, encouraging each other, praying for each other. Um, so yeah, so those are a few of the things I'm working on and then probably a solo book sometime in the near future. So stay tuned on that. Can you tell us more about your passion for apostolic women? Where does it come from and why that specific niche? Describe this woman to us and why are you so passionate about serving her? Yeah, it's very interesting because my whole life I felt like I was made for more. Like, like I said, I was very driven with the teacher thing. And then when I was a stay-at-home mom, you know, it's a blessing and a gift. Don't get me wrong to be a stay-at-home mom. But I always felt like like I was starting some – I was being headroom mom. I was, you know, creative memories and a discovery toys consultant. I was running women's ministry. You know, it was like these leadership. We were running young married small groups. And it was just always this like leadership type thing. And uh, a few years ago, I just got in, introduced to this phrase and, you know, kingdom entrepreneurship. I'm like, that's it. Like I'm a problem solver. I want to help people. And that, that led me to, you know, learning more about the prophetic and apostolic. And I'm like, you know, and I get all these amazing ideas. And sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going crazy. Where, like, why, you know, people are looking at me like, Jen, another idea, you know, but I just feel like it's this passion that the Lord's given me to kind of, you know, 
all this training, it's all, like I said, it's almost like these pieces of the puzzle are coming together, right? And to help these other strong kingdom warrior queen, you know, apostolic leaders in their calling to not only understand their true identity, power and authority, but come along, you know, sometimes it's, it's lonely at the top in leadership, right? So you need those fellow kingdom warrior queens coming alongside of you and encouraging you and that kind of thing. And And obviously, if I can help them declare victory in all areas of their lives, you know, I've been married 27 years. So I have a few things, you know, insights on how to uh, maintain a healthy marriage, right? And I have three children ranging from 12 to 21. So I have know a few things about parenting and just, I feel like the Lord has equipped me and given me a lot of education and training and also the empathy and understanding for my own life experiences to really be able to help support these um, apostolic leaders. So I'm really excited about this direction that he's taken me in. You mentioned about identity quite often throughout your chapter. Where do you think our focus should be when we speak about identity? Because I've encountered many women that take their roles and responsibilities as identity. I also heard you speaking about being a mom and running a business and the weight of it. How do you manage to to embrace your identity in Christ? Yes. Well, like I said, it's been a journey. And I, th- I have a, a good friend of mine and mentor. She explains it almost like an artichoke heart. You can have the heart of the artichoke and then there's different leaves, right? So, so many people have the heart of who they are as their role or their assignment. Like I am a mom or I am a teacher, I am a whatever. But when you base it just on that, And then that's what, you know, during the pandemic or different things, if you lose your job, if you like, then you lose your identity completely, right? So I'm learning and growing in this. I'm a royal daughter of the most high God, no matter what I do, this is who I am. I'm a kingdom warrior queen. You know, he's given me these abilities and these gifts and these talents. Uh, He knit me together in my mother's womb, you know, Psalm 139. He created me a certain way, regardless of if I do anything for him again in my life, right? But then within that, you know, like these branches coming out, it's mom, it's wife, it might be a church leader, a coach, a consultant, a mentor, you know, teacher. I was a, a teacher and a professor for a while. So that's really um, why I'm so passionate about it. And I think it's why I've, I kind of, the enemy maybe fought me on that all these years, because I think it is such a key piece that people need to understand their identity. It's about the relationship with the Lord and who you are and your royal inheritance, right? It's not about that religion. And if you check off the boxes for church, that kind of thing. So, so yeah, I'm super passionate about the identity in Christ. It's so powerful. Did you always know that you were a leader? I actually have. Yeah. I was, well, maybe as a kid, they would have called it bossy. I don't know. But I, you know, like I said, since kindergarten, I always wanted to be a teacher. You know, I always helped out at camp, you know, camp counselor or, you know, helping with staff there teaching. Like I said, with my husband, we ran um, young married small groups for a while. I ran women's ministry, you know, so it's just different, different um, capacities, I guess. And it's all, it's all kind of coming together now. So. Yeah, definitely leadership is in there, for sure. I'm so excited for the lives that will be impacted by our book. Do you have any last words of wisdom, anything else you'd like to share with those that's tuned in right now? I think the biggest thing is never giving up hope and that um, the Lord is with you. Okay, I know it sounds basic, but that was just something, like I said, I, I was really clinging to that anchor of hope and always keeping the Lord center in my life. And just, I would tend to get overwhelmed with a lot of things, like maybe thinking, oh, I have to replace this thought. And, you know, I'm so down in the dumps. I'm so far in the pit. But just take it one thought at a time. What's maybe, you know, pray to the Lord and say, Lord, what's a lie I'm believing about myself? What do you say about who I am? Help me come out of agreement with that lie. Find a verse, meditate on that, write it into a declaration. You know, instead of saying, you know, I'm anxious, just say, Lord, your word says, don't be anxious, but pray you'll give me peace. I have the Prince of Peace living in me. Like just start simple, find a lie, replace it with that truth, and then start repeating because you can rewire your brain. Things can be different. You can unlock the real you. You're royal, you're enough, you have authority, and you're meant to leave a legacy. So be excited, empowered, encouraged, and I hope I can come alongside and and, and uh, help you on that journey. So there you have it, everyone, the dynamic speaker, coach, best-selling author, all-round kingdom warrior queen. You can reach out to Jen if you'd love to connect with her and if her story resonated with you. Jen, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Thank you so much, Megan. Have a great day. So there you have, we have it, everyone. Yet another episode of the Amplify Your Voice TV show. We will meet same time, same place next week. Bye-bye, everyone.